very, very warm welcome to you, the hardy survivors who've trudged through the snow to be here this morning. Thank you um, for your making the journey here for our annual vision service and annual meeting. Um, my name is Dave. I'm aware there might be some visitors here who um, are, are just maybe your car's broken down in the causeway or something and you've come to church. You are most welcome. Welcome um, to this. This is a, a very unusual service. It's a unique one in the year when we gather together people from different congregations in the church to reflect on the year that's just gone and to give thanks for it, um, to transact some of the things we need to do, like electing our leaders um, for the coming year, and to look ahead as well at what God might have in store for us. So this is uh, one of my favourite moments in the year, because I get to look at people who normally I see at either 8 o'clock, 9.15, 10.59, 5.30 or 7 o'clock, and here you all are sitting um, together. So one of the things we'll leave a bit of time for is for you to maybe say hello to people that you may not have met before, um, because we are All Saints Marlowe, and um, though you may not recognise some of the brothers and sisters um, sitting around you, we are all part of this one church, and so it's a very special moment in our year. Um, inevitably, we're a little bit lower on numbers than we might sometimes be because of the weather, um, but fortunately, the one who really matters is here, and so let's um, pause for a moment now and pray as we begin this time. And maybe as we do, we can um, open our hearts to God. We can acknowledge that for everyone here, this service is slightly different to what we're used to. But we can also say in our hearts, Lord, we are here for you, first and foremost. Lord Jesus, when you died, you gathered to yourself one church. And when you rose from the dead, you brought new life to your people on earth. We thank you that you have gathered us into your church and that we gather here today as one people, your people, bought with the precious blood shed on the cross, filled with the same Holy Spirit and united by our identity as your children. We thank you for this time together today. We pray that you would take first place in it and that your name would be lifted high as we spend this time together. We pray you would lead us by your spirit and that you would inspire us and bind us closely together so that we can fulfill all that you're calling us to be and to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I feel I should explain a little bit uh, about why we're here, because uh, we used to do an annual meeting on a Wednesday evening in the church hall, and we'd get 20 to 30 people, and we would go through what was quite a businessy style of meeting. And we uh, said to ourselves, well, it would be nice to have a greater participation from the church in that. So we thought, well, let's move it to a Sunday morning. Um, and we also thought that gives us the opportunity to think about the more businessy side of the church in an atmosphere of prayer and worship and very consciously in God's presence. Now, the risk of that is that the people who want a proper church meeting feel dissatisfied that they don't get one. And the people who really don't give a monkeys about that and just want to come to church and worship God don't get that either. But I hope the benefit is that actually we can draw these things together where they belong. Um, that the prayer and the money and the worship and the planning and strategy all um, take place together. So forgive us if there are clunky bits and it doesn't feel quite like church to you. I'm hoping it won't feel quite like normal church, but it won't also feel quite like a normal annual meeting either. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping. Um, any children who are here, there are children's uh, groups going on in the hall. The teenagers are downstairs in the crypt and the creche is open, so do please feel free um, to use that. If you want a hot cup of tea or coffee, especially if your hands are still feeling a bit numb from clearing snow off your car, please feel free um, to, to go, and we have the wonderful team over there making coffee. Please feel free um, to get one of those if you haven't already. Um, and our order, if you like, 
is um, you've already been watching some of the highlights of the year on the screen. Um, we're going to be um, doing this in three sections. Firstly, we're going to look backwards at the last year, giving thanks for the past and reflecting on it, and we'll be hearing reports from the church wardens and the treasurer. Um, we're then going to think about the present and the responsibilities, the things we have to do today about uh, the electoral role and electing our leaders. We'll also be hearing testimony from people who've joined the church in the last year about what being in this church now has been like for them. And then we'll look more to the future and perhaps try and glimpse something of what God has for us all. And interspersed with all of that, we will be singing um, hymns and songs reflecting the different musical traditions we enjoy in the church. And those are more than musical interludes. They're moments for us um, to worship God together as a gathered church and also um, to express something to, back to him as we reflect on everything he's doing amongst us. So we're going to start by doing that now. Um, we have all the words on the screen there. I hope you can all see the screen. We're going to sing a hymn, which Ridian is going to lead us from the organ. It's Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. So let's stand and sing together. As we stand um, and come before this God whose mercy is sure, Let's take a moment to reflect on maybe on the last week, on our own lives, on the things we've done that have um, kept us far from God or hurt other people. And let's confess them to God using um, the Lent phrase, the Kyrie eleison. Um, please just repeat the words after me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all mercy forgive us and cleanse us from our sins, heal us and lead us into righteousness, and bless us with the life that only he can bring. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. We're um, looking backwards to the past year now, and a, um, just a bit of business that we need to do is to approve the minutes of the last meeting, um, which I hope you will have had emailed to you. I don't know if there's anyone who's been scrutinising them carefully, um, but does anyone have any changes or um, questions about those minutes? Or are you happy for us to approve them, the minutes of last year's me annual meeting? I know it's a long time ago now. Okay, so anyone who's happy to propose those minutes? Thank you, Tobias. Tobias Grotrup and Sue Glimwood's seconding them. Um, all those in favour? There we are. You get to exercise your democratic right, and uh, I will sign those. Thank you. We also have a few apologies um, for the meeting today. I will sign them in a moment, David. Thank you. Um, we have some apologies. Do you have the list there, David, that I can, can read out? So people who would love to be here but can't be include Alison Smart, Richard and Linda Scott, Jim and Elaine Stacey, Jenny Redman, John Chapman, Shirley Arnold. Um, so we thank them for their apologies. Thank you. I imagine there are a few more stuck at home who would love to be here as well who aren't. Um, but now we're going to move um, to hear from our church wardens, Julie and Ruth. I'd love to invite them to come and join me up at the front here. Um, I was trying to guess how many hours these two women have spent serving our church this year. And it's got to be something like a thousand hours each since we last met. It is a, just the commitment that they have given has gone way over and above um, anything that we have asked. And so um, I want to... I'm still seeing you in a nun's outfit, Ruth, I'm afraid... <laughs> Uh, Ruth's been in Sister Act in the Court Garden Theatre um, this week, acting as a, a nun. Uh, um, but I just want to say thank you on behalf of us all for just the massive commitment um, and the huge gifts and leadership talent that you've brought um, to serve this church. We really, I mean, I probably see more than most other people about the sacrifices you've made, and we would be in a totally different and much worse place without what you've done. So thank you. Can we give them a round of applause?
No. Oh, oh that's better. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, um, would Helen and Anna like to just come and join us for a second? So, um, yeah, we're going to uh, reflect back on um, a really, a really lovely year for our church family. Um, some of the things that have happened and some of the things that we've learnt over the year. So, <coughs> thanks. So, um, we're going to start just by. Um, having some uh, one-minute stories from um, Helen and uh, Anna and also Ruth is going to talk about the small group. So um, they're strictly to one minute. And where should we start with you, Helen? Oh, Teeny Saints, right. Fab, brilliant. Thank you, Julie. Um, So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna um, and I'm the children's worker here at All Saints. Um, Over summer last year, I really felt God encouraging me to set up a more regular um, group for um, babies and toddlers, for naught to three year olds and their um, parents and carers. Um, But at the time, it didn't really feel like we had um, enough people to sustain running it. Um, But come September, we decided to start the group anyway. Um, So on the 7th of September, we started um, what we call Teeny Saints that runs weekly here on Thursday mornings. And on the first week, we had um, nine little ones here, um, which was great. But I went away just... um, just praying and hoping that more people would find out um, about what we were doing here um, and that the group um, existed. Um, And well, the next week came um, and Julia and I were a little surprised to then find 23 little ones here. Um, I'm not sure what we would have done if we um, kept increasing at that rate, Um, but we were very thankful for all those people that came then. Um, So we run on a weekly basis and we now have 121 contacts of parents or carers of 0 to 3 year olds um, and 73 of those have attended um, Teeny Saints over the past two terms. Um, So we have um, ideas and plans for how we would like to um, grow this group, develop this group in the future. Um, But just to finish, I want to leave you with um, a few things that I um, would like to thank God for for what he's been doing um, in Teeny Saints over the past um, couple of terms and those things are going to appear on the screen after our, after our photos Hi, yeah, so I'm Helen and I work with the young people here Oh, sorry, come over um, Yeah, so I started back in January last year and so we've been on a bit of a voyage of discovery in terms of what we should do with the youth here and trying to kind of revamp the youth work that we do here So one of the new things that we started was um, a group called the Donut Club which meets at Borlay School and I know for a number of you you've been praying for years and years and years that we'd get an open door into the school and it, It's nothing to do with me, but God just opened that door and it's your prayers that have done that. So we regularly see around 20 young people come to that group on a Wednesday, which has been a real blessing and encouragement to us. On a Wednesday night, we run Game On uh, in the hall, which is a youth group. And we've done everything from Winter Olympics to pancake parties to Strictly. Um, But we aren't kind of getting too many young people along to that. So we are trying to rethink about what is the way forward with that. Um, We started a breakfast club, which happens on a Sunday morning between the two services to try and kind of create more community between the two services for the young people and we run cryptics during the 1059 so we've had the youth council feeding us what they wanted kind of thing all the way along so it's been a really interesting exciting year um we're quite a small team but a really committed team have been a real blessing so we do really appreciate your prayers and i think i've covered everything we would like to do a parenting course we would like to do youth alpha and we are about to revamp the crypt as well so we're putting a funding bid for that so prayer for that would be really much appreciated thank you Back in 2016, uh, the leadership team decided to take a look at the small group system that we had. And although we had quite a few established groups, uh, it wasn't a particularly great structure and it was never easy for uh, newcomers and people on the fringes of our church to actually join. So a little committee was put together, that was myself, Sarah Fitzgerald, Marilyn Clark and Kathy Burns, who's part of Marlow Bottom Church, uh, got together to look at a, a new system that's already in place in many churches, both here and abroad, uh, and had worked and had, does work very well up at St Andrews in High Wycombe. Um, which is basically small groups done on a termly basis. Now, many of you are part of those groups now, so you now know how it works. 
Um, so back in February 2017, we launched this new system, introduced it to everyone so uh, they'd get the idea. And by April, we would published our first booklet with uh, all the different groups in there. And I think there were 24 groups, small groups that people could be part of. Uh, and the great thing was that uh, it, it made small groups uh, uh, much broader. So we have activities, we continue with our general Bible studies, um, we have age-specific groups as well, uh, and so on. Uh, so this has continued. So our first booklet came out for summer last year. We have now did autumn, and obviously now we've just done the spring, and we're just about to publish our next booklet for the summer. Um, I think on our first term, uh, 280 people plus, I don't know if Marilyn's here, she can verify this, became a member of one of our small groups. And so that uh, continues and it grows little by little. And we pray as we go through this year and into next year uh, that that will continue to bring in more people, especially those on the fringes of our church uh, church family as well, uh, to come into, uh, into not only this church, but also our, our three other churches in the 4U group. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to move on now. Um, stay with me, Ruth. This is a, this is a double act. <laughs> um, so um, if we can move on to the next slide. Um, I'd just like to take um, a couple of minutes to talk about some of the things we've really learned together this year. Um, and one of the key areas is around communication. So um, we were aware that there were things happening this time last year in the church that a number of people were unhappy about, and we were really uh, not communicating and discussing those things well between ourselves. That made us really reflect and see that we needed to talk to each other more often. So we established the quarterly church forums, um, which are really an opportunity. They're on a Sunday evening. Um, and they're an opportunity for us as a family to come and discuss anything that is on our mind, that is concerning us about the running and the future of our church, and also to hear about some of the initiatives um, that, uh, that are ongoing. And I would say that um, we have gone from strength to strength with that over the year. Um, uh, initially, I think there was quite a lot of frustration. Um, in, in the last forum, I think there was a, a lot of really positive energy about the things that were going on. So our next forum is on Sunday, the 15th of April. It's at 7 o'clock in the church hall, and I really would encourage you to come along. It's a really great chance for us to slightly um, informally to talk about and share all our thoughts. This is our church, and it's a great chance for everybody to participate together. So <coughs> as we go forward, please. Um, one of the, the things that, that we really uh, did need to listen to and work on together uh, was uh, the prayer chapel and um, the use of that chapel. And um, we have some fantastic news. I know at the last forum it was a bit frustrating that we, we, we couldn't, uh, we hadn't moved forward as much as we would have liked. But now we are in a great position. So I'm really thrilled to say that the public notices around the new altar um, have now been uh, published. Um, and we have a church council on the 26th of March where we'll be looking uh, to finalise the arrangements uh, around bringing in uh, the new altar. Um, and we're, we're just very grateful to those who've donated towards making that possible and really um, for the prayer that has gone to make it possible to reach that stage. And also uh, to be able to tell you, um, <coughs> excuse me, the sofas have been removed and we are fully legal. So we're really thrilled that everything around that prayer altar um, is now in, in a very good state and can now be used for the purpose uh, that it's intended, which is for prayer and worship. And that's exactly where we, we intend to focus. So I think that's very um, exciting news for everybody. Um, some other great news is our lovely new piano. We should really have had the cover taken off for today so everyone could see it, but um, that has uh, arrived. And again, thank you so much to everyone who donated towards making that possible. Um, that um, you, you, 
you may uh, not be aware, was, was something at, that Martin started as, as an initiative, um, having, having identified this piano um, not so long ago. And the momentum and the enthusiasm and the love that went into making that happen is just a real joy. Uh, and we're thrilled to have that. And then the Narthex uh, project, so um, a another huge amount of investment from Richard, to whom we're incredibly grateful. Um, just as I came in today, he was showing me that actually some of the cubicles um, on the upper level are now being installed. So it won't be long before, before we have that fully in place. Um, and another um, great opportunity for us to share hospitality uh, and grow our church. Um, so... I can move on. So finally, I just want to say um, a huge thank you, Ruth and I together. Um, there, there is a, a written report um, that should have been sent out to you all that, that covers, hopefully in more detail, the many, many people that we need to thank. Uh, for those of you who didn't get the online version, there are some paper copies at the back of the church. But there are so many of you that are volunteers, so many who... Um, provide welcome, who are involved in the pastoral care, the pastoral team that are there across our churches to really be there for, for our church community and um, to everyone that's been involved. So we really do work locally, nationally and globally. Uh, locally, we've got a Wickham Homeless Connection as an example and globally, the, uh, the refugee work that Vanessa is leave, leading. So um, many, many thanks. We have so much. And what a wonderful church family we have. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. So, um, so Matt now is going to come and talk to you, give you the treasurer's report um, and explain how, how all of this gets funded. Good morning. I'm Matt Wilson, the treasurer for ASM. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of the highlights of the financial position for last year. Um, before I do that, I would just like to pass on some of my own thanks, though, because um, many people are involved in the running of the, the operational running of the finance side of the church. So to all of those that are involved in that, um, a personal thank you to you for your efforts uh, for the smooth running of, of all of the elements of the finance. There are uh, three people in particular though I would like to sort of just pass on thanks to. Uh, firstly, Emily, who's been involved in some of the bookkeeping at the early part of last year. And she's moved on uh, now. And Peter Reynolds has helped uh, enormously over the year in terms of um, the general running. Uh, and he's also been heavily involved in helping train Judith Keeves, who's also now taking on a role of bookkeeper uh, for the church. So many thanks to all those people, Peter particularly helping us get through our year end. Um, and we've had the final confirmation that the audited accounts have been approved. Uh, so a huge amount of effort went in from Peter to help us get to that position. So many thanks, Peter. Um, our overall financial position, we ended the year with funds at about £166,000. Um, that is down on the prior year, but there is a uh, a timing element associated to restricted funds that have been received post year end. So, adjusting for that, our funds would be nearer to £195,000, about 15 down on the prior year. That £15,000 movement is primarily in unrestricted funds. I'll break it out into two elements. Firstly, we invested in the church hall floor, and that was around about £10,000 uh, of investment from our. Uh, cash funds. Uh, the second element is we ran a deficit in the unrestricted funds of about £5,000. So overall income into the church was about 360000 So an enormous amount of generosity from all the members of the congregation and fundraising efforts. And again, I would like to pass on my thanks for all of the kind donations and ongoing giving that we receive. Our costs did exceed that uh, to the tune of about uh, 5,000 pounds. So we've seen uh, increases in our salaries uh, as we've added to the church team. Uh, but I'm sure as you've heard in the previous uh, section, the fabulous work that that's really contributing towards to grow the mission of the church. 
Um, final element for me is just to say we did have a one-off income last year of about £16,000. So we transferred funds from the previous community youth project into uh, ASM, which was about 10000 And then we released some funds from endowments to help support um, parish share, our, our cost of parish share. So that does leave us a little bit more challenged in our finances looking forward to this year. And we are budgeting uh, with a deficit of £25,000. So it's one uh, area that we're focusing heavily on in the church council. Um, and I would also like to just encourage uh, everyone to continue their generosity in terms of giving uh, and providing for the church. I'm sure as you see, the facilities we have uh, and the progress we're making is, is absolutely uh, awesome. Uh, I will be around to take any questions you would like at the end of the service. Um, thank you very much. Matt, thank you um, for the huge amount of work represented by just in that short report. Um, as, as we've heard from Julian Ruth, we have our quarterly church forums, but we also wanted to leave a time now um, for questions, if anyone's got anything they want to ask about the, um, the church. So I think Julie's going to host this bit. Do you want me to be the runner with the microphone? Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so do, does anyone have... Anyone have any, any questions at all that you'd like to ask in this time together? Nothing at all. We, mu we must... Oh, oh, Tobias. Would you, would you be able to give a quick update on where we stand with Holy Trinity Church, if there's anything just briefly to report, because obviously that would be a, a big project for the forthcoming future. Thank you for asking, Tobias. So this is the, um, the project which no doubt probably all of you or most of you will have heard about, looking at um, buying back Holy Trinity Church. I am going to mention it um, a bit later on, but we've had a, a team of people who've been looking at it um, and, and look at what it would involve. They have reported back to the church council, and we, uh, which they did at our last meeting, um, and we are currently considering that report, and we will get back to you as soon as we know what action we're going to take. So we don't have anything definitive we can announce today, but we are, a, a, a lot of work has been done, and um, that team has done an incredible job. They've worked really hard and, and produced a really good report back to us. So I'm afraid it would be nice if this was at a moment where we could do a big reveal on that, but I'm afraid we, we're not in a position to do that. Uh, but there has been an awful lot of work going on on it. Does that answer the question? Yeah. It's not a question, it's a comment. I'm horrified that we're going back to a position where we've got a £25,000 deficit. We've been in this position in the past and we crawled out of it and now we find we're there again. So I just want to register the fact that I, I'm not happy about that. So, Mew, your point is really well made. I, I would say that... Um, we're not kind of just sitting back and waiting for that money to be found. We are, within church council, taking some very real initiatives um, to look at how we're going to bridge that gap. And, for example, Rachel um, is, is, at the moment, um, uh, running a, 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 a campaign where she's, she's writing to people who give through, through blue envelopes and other things, so I would say that we still have a long way to go, but, and, and of course we are addressing that prayerfully, but we are also very, very committed to tangible actions to see how we fill that gap and to monitoring that very closely throughout the year. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Matt? Yeah, so that's another good point. Yeah, we're looking at uh, the parish giving scheme, um, which is a scheme that um, is run, is it, is, is it national? Yeah, it is national and certainly within our diocese and we're currently looking to implement that, which will be another way 
of having some structure to encourage uh, giving within the church. So, so I'm not um, undermining your point, Mew, but I'm, I'm also saying we're not just sitting back and, and waiting. We are taking very tangible actions. And I'd love to ask if you would just pray for us. I think one of the hardest bits of leading this church is gauging how quickly things are growing, how much risk do we take. And, uh, and it is hard. And we have, we have some good discussions about it in the church councils, you might imagine. Um, but we, we want to respond to all the opportunities we have, but we want to do it in a way that's wise and not foolish. And, and that, uh, for me at least, is one, one of the hardest things we have to, have to judge. I think we've got time for one more question. Mike, did you have? Could you give a brief comment, Dave, Julia, on the Marlow Bottom Church project and how that plays into the overall thinking of this church? I was just thinking vis-a-vis the Holy Trinity Church project. It's, it's another overlay and, and a very significant development. You, you might just want to explain what's happening in Marlow Bottom. Just so people Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So Mike lives in Marlow Bottom and so knows quite a lot about our, our sister church, and, uh, which is in, in another one of the churches in our For You team. Um, and that church, um, there's a, a new church called The Lantern, which is a community church, which has, has grown almost from scratch in the last two years. Graham and Sammy have been leading it. Um, they get between 50 and 90 people there and, and uh, uh, now in their fortnightly services. Uh, they run a youth group on a Sunday evenings. They have a weekly club in Burford School. They run an alpha course. They have um, a women's group that meets in the morning. There's a huge amount of spiritual life growing there. And one of the ways they're responding to that is in partnership with the Methodist Church there. They're looking at selling both churches and rebuilding a new community centre in Marlow Bottom um, on the site of one of them, which is a, a huge project, as you can imagine. And one of the things that we... Um, are asking ourselves, and the question you've asked, Mike, has been put to us um, to, to consider what synergies are there. You know, do we need new facilities in Marlow Bottom and in Marlow, for example? Um, and so that is a question we're taking very seriously and thinking about. Um, at the moment, and incidentally, I'm also meeting with other, the other leaders of churches in Marlow who are looking at things to make sure that we don't all to kind of duplicate or, or do things that aren't sort of um, thought through and linked together. So we're having those conversations. At the moment, we don't have any conclusive answers to it, but we are trying to push, push all these things to see what, where there seems to be life and, and energy, um, but to absolutely make sure that we do it so that it all fits into one picture of one God's one church in Marlow, whether it's in Marlow Bottom or, for that matter, uh, River Church or... Methodist Church and, and other churches that are planning, you know, expansive projects. So I don't know if that answers your, your question. But again, it's a complex picture and we're trying to lead, there's a lot of moving parts, but we are very much keep, trying to keep them all linked together. Thank you for those questions. We, we are around after the service. If you would like uh, to, to ask a question that you haven't managed to, um, or come to a church forum, or come to the team um, annual meeting, which is happening at the end of April, where all four churches in our team gather together for a similar kind of meeting. We've just been talking about link together. What I would love to do now is give you three minutes to turn to someone, preferably someone you haven't met before, and say hello. And um, as a conversation starter, you might want to say one thing that you want to give thanks for in this church over the last year. Just to conclude, I'm looking back. So you have three minutes to um, talk to someone. I can tell you, you're all lovely. You don't need to be scared about talking to someone you don't know. We've looked backwards at um, some of the things that have been happening in the church over the last year. And we give thanks to God, I think, don't we, for, um, for all his goodness to us um, individually and as a church and now um, we're going to move into the present and there are some things that this meeting does um, that we have to um, fulfill every year and the first is um, the most popular part of the meeting because it's the shortest which is Muse report on uh, our electoral role so I you may not know this is the closest thing the Church of England has to a membership list and um, Mew does the work of keeping track of us all, um, not just how many of us there are, but where we live and uh, all our contact details. So, Mew, over to you. Okay, so this is the official bit. Won't take long. This year's changes to the electoral roll. 
after the annual meeting last year, the number of the names on the roll for All Saints Marlow was 275. During the intervening year, there were six additions and five removals, which meant we have a net increase of one. And following the recent revision, the number on the roll now stands at 276. It, thank you, Mew. It's not as easy as it looks. And um, many of you will be asking yourself, well, why, why is that number, you know, on, on a, some Sundays we might have three or 400 people coming through the church. Uh, we've got something like uh, 450 adults and 250 children on our database. Um, you, you may, there are probably many people here who aren't on the electoral roll. Um, if you want to kind of play your full part in the life of the church, it is a good thing to sign on the electoral roll. And there may be some of you who aren't on our database, who don't receive uh, the kind of documents we were talking about before this meeting. If you would like to um, go on the database, more and more we're using that as a way of keeping contact with uh, this growing community. Uh, Mura would love to meet you after the service. If you would like to give her your details um, and, uh, your, and permission for us to contact you. Uh, you may, some of you know, if you work in this kind of realm, that in May this year the law is changing and we need far more stringent permission than um, we've needed to before because of some new laws that are coming in around data protection. If you suddenly stop hearing from us in May, it's because you haven't um, given us your permission for us to um, communicate with you. So I just say that because communication is, is, we try and work really hard at it, but it is so hard to keep everyone in contact and every single person matters. So if you're not fully um, hearing all of the things that are going on in the church, do speak to Mew and she would love um, to take your details um, and add you to um, the electoral roll. Thank you very much for that, Mew. Um, we now come to the other thing we have to do today, which is our elections for the church council. So this church is led by um, the clergy and elected members of, uh, of the church council. And for the last couple of weeks, we have had a nomination list up here. Um, you may know that we have on the church council... Oh, thank you. We have um, different uh, jobs and roles that people play, so, um, which I will describe in a moment. Um, but before we... Um, we talk about the elections this year. I want to uh, say a huge thank you to the people who are standing down and ask them just to stand up so we can give them a round of applause. So, Bob um, Davis, you are, Bob has been um, on the, uh, the Deanery Synod, as, which represents us in the wider region as well. Um, we're also saying now, I don't know if all these people are here. You, well, we're going to give you a round of applause in a moment, so sorry. Richard Tyso, is Richard here? No, Richard has been our nine, uh, one of the 915 service wardens, and you're going to just have to remind me of the names because I didn't write them down. Of who else <laughs> is standing down? Jay is standing down. Jay's here. Would you like to stand up, Jay? Thank you. Um, is there anyone else I've missed? This is awful, isn't it? I should have written the list of names down. I think we have Richard, Jay, and Bob. Can we give a round of applause? Thank you. Oh, and Pat, I knew there was someone I was missing. Go on, Pat, you'll get your own round of applause. Can you stand up and sing? Um, so we now have the elections for this year, and I'm pleased to say that, that um, we, the number of candidates we have does not exceed the number of positions, so we don't actually need to vote, um, which is, um, is, is a, a, a happy situation because we don't have to um, work out all the voting slips and everything but we what we have is service wardens so as you've already heard the church wardens do a huge amount of work leading the church if you like at a more strategic level and so in order to provide a point of contact with each congregation we have um, for each congregation service wardens and the people standing for those positions this year are for the eight o'clock communion service James Cook um, James isn't here he was here clearing the snow on the path at half past seven this morning but um, he is standing again as for the 8 o'clock service. For the 9.15 service, we have um, Anne Morse. Anne is here, I believe. Were you happy to stand up, Anne? So I'm going to ask these people to stand if they're present. The 10.59 um, service, we have Claire McLaughlin. Claire, where are you? Standing at the back there, already standing. Um, the 
uh, 5.30 Evensong, we have Sue Glyn Woods. Sue, would you stand? And we, have, we haven't mentioned it yet, but we have a new um, service, the 7 o'clock evening service. Um, and I'm very happy to say that Ian Branch, um, who many of you will know, um, who can't be here today, is standing um, as the service warden for, um, for that. We also have some other roles. We have um, team council representatives um, who represent us across the whole team. And so um, those are, get this right, Paul Taylor and Tony Pepperell. Paul's up in, the, up in the box up there, and Tony's at the back. Thank you, Tony. Um, we have Richard Powell, who works as our property warden, so manages all the building projects, and so he's a busy man, as you can imagine. Richard, can I embarrass you, ask you to stand up? Um, we have, of course, our church wardens, Julie and Ruth, who you've already seen. I won't ask you to stand up um, again. We have Rachel Bordillon. Rachel, are you here? I don't think she is. She's in the crash. Um, Rachel acts as, as um, an administrator, partly PA to the church wardens, uh, partly administrator for, um, for various things, including um, some of the trusts that we, uh, that we work with. Um, and we also have Linda Scott standing, who can't be here as well. Linda Scott is standing for, um, for the church council. So all of those people, I'm going to read their names out again. Paul Taylor, Richard Powell, Claire McLaughlin, Tony Pepperell, Anne Morse, Ruth Frost, Julie Purvis, um, Sue Glyn Woods, Linda Scott, Rachel Bordillon, Ian Branch, and James Cook have all been proposed and seconded. And so I'm happy to declare they are hereby elected as the leaders of our church um, for the coming year. Um, should we give them a round of applause? <laughs> we meet, um, most months we meet about 10 times a year, um, and obviously there's a lot of, of, with those responsibilities that each person carries um, that goes on as well in between meetings. Um, please do pray for the church council, and uh, we will be praying for everyone at the end of the service. Um, but that concludes the, the elections um, for this year. We're now going to finish this time of being in the present by hearing um, from two people who've joined the church in the last year. So I'm going to invite Phil and Izzy um, to come and join me at the front. Um, and they're going to share with us, they, uh, this time last year, they, well, Phil went to Holy Trinity School, so he'd kind of been in the building, but this wasn't, and you'd been in the choir. So you both did, of course you did. Um, but you started coming to the church in the last year. Can you tell us a little bit about what's yeah. happened? Um, yeah, so those of you who don't know, we've been coming for about four months now. Um, we went on the Alpha course, which is why we ended up coming here um, in the first place. Um, and it's been amazing, really, meeting every, all the new people. It's just been so welcoming and lovely, and we've, yeah, just so excited to continue really with our journey one of the one of the most amazing things as well is going on the alpha course um we were very nervous to start with and right from the start everyone um that we came across um both on the alpha course and from the church representing the, the church family on the alpha course were just so unbelievably welcoming to us um and we still didn't start attending church until quite late on during the Alpha course. Um, and I can remember walking back from Alpha every week with Izzy. Um, and she was just going, no, I, I still don't want to go to church. I still don't want to go to church. Um, it's just too scary. There's too many people there. What do we do in church? You know. Um, so eventually we actually uh, spoke to our Alpha group uh, about our sort of the fact that we were very nervous about coming to church and they said oh come along we'll all be there we'll welcome you and I remember we we finally braved it and we sort of walked down thinking what are we doing um and we walked through the door and there were two or three people from our group with open arms welcome smiles from the start and we were just made to feel be, feel so welcome um right from the from the very beginning um and from there our journey has just gone on and on um we've both been confirmed We've committed our life to following Jesus and um, it's Jesus and the church and everyone here has become such a massive part of our lives um, and we just want to thank you, a uh, big thank you to everyone um, and if there's anyone new today that would like to have a chat with us later on, we'll be here so we'd like to make you feel welcome just like everyone did to us as well. So. 
Um, and I just also wanted to say um, another thank you to everyone. And um, for me personally, it's just helped my confidence so much. I feel like I've just changed as a person completely, um, being able to stand here. And obviously, we've had numerous talks. <laughs> and I know, Dave, you worry sometimes that we don't want to, but I thank you because it's just helped me overcome my fears, really. And obviously, Jesus has helped that. And everyone here has helped my confidence. And yeah, it's just, I feel like I can do anything. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> it's quite emotional for me as well, because we sat there this morning um, in the living room talking about what we were going to say today. And Izzy just said, just completely off the cuff, do you know, I, think, I feel like I can do anything now. I feel like I can do anything with Jesus by my side in the church. So I think, absolutely, thank you, God, for everything. Um, and thank you to all of you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> can I say a prayer for you? Wow, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's quite a scary group of people to stand up in front of, isn't it? So you've done very well. And um, it's amazing. You were married here in September, and, and God has done so many things in your lives. And it's a, thank you for sharing that with us, because it's a huge um, encouragement to our faith, isn't it, to, to hear. So I'd love to pray for you, if that's okay. Um, Father, we thank you so much for Phil and Izzy, the way you have drawn them with your love that you have made them part of your family, the church, and for the amazing answers to prayer and the the wonderful changes you're bringing in their life. We pray for them, Lord, that you would bless every part of their lives, their, their relationship with you, their relationship to one another in marriage, their friendships, their families, um, and we thank you for all the plans you have for them, and we pray that they would all come to pass in your perfect time. We pray that you would bless and protect and provide for Phil and Izzy in every way. And we thank you for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. I think you deserve another round of applause. (laughs) Thank you, guys. We're going to sing again now. And if you're anything like me, you want to thank God for what we've just heard and uh, and been reminded of, that we um, worship a God who changes lives and um, who comes to us where we most need him and gives us um, all that we truly need. So let's stand. Jill and the band are going to lead us again. In your name today, and that yours is the name that is above every other name, we yield our lives to you again. We're so grateful for this moment to be together in your presence. And we pray that as we listen to your word now, you would speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Central to um, all we believe as a church is the, um, the authority and the power of the Bible as God's written word. And so even though this is the annual meeting, we're very much including a reading now, which Ruth is going to read for us. Um, the reading is taken from John chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 20 to 33. I think it's going to be up on the screen, yes. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to... Excuse me. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered... 
This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Thanks be to God. Rory, thank you very much. We're coming now to look, um, finally, ahead. What might God have in store for us this year? And I think this passage gives us a wonderful place to start because um, as we look ahead, we are reading about some people, um, some outsiders, some Greeks, who came to the big festival in Jerusalem. And they came with a question. And the question we've just heard, it'll come up in the screen in a moment, was this, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Now, where I, the church where I was a curate, uh, in the pulpit, not that we used it um, very much because it had been kind of moved into one side of the church, but there was a brass plaque inside the pulpit and it had this verse on it. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. It was a rem- reminder to anyone who was giving a talk at that church that the people they were talking to really want to see Jesus. They don't want to see, um, you know, the preacher showing off. It's a wonderful verse. It's a wonderful verse for us to meditate on, I think, as we think about the outsiders who maybe aren't here today, but who, whether they would express it in these words or not, have a longing, a longing to be loved or forgiven, a longing to find purpose or meaning in their lives. One of the things I'm really committed to is trying to lead this church for the people right out on the edge or even beyond the edge. The people who might come like those Greeks and think, we're we're probably taking a great liability here, but could we see Jesus? And we want to be a church, don't we, that gathers those people at the door and says, yes, yes, you can. Just as the disciples, we presume, brought them to Jesus. And as we look back at what um, we've, we've heard during this service, there are some, some wonderful things that in seeking to do that, um, by God's goodness, have happened. So we had, um, Paul, if you could just run through these on the slide, the small groups we've heard about. And the, these were the priorities we set at the annual meeting last year. Um, leadership development. And we've done um, a lot, quite a lot of it has been behind the scenes, but some of you will have um, known that met the interns that we have working with here on, on gap years, Sophie and Alex, and the work that um, Jill and others have been done, doing in, in helping develop and grow new leaders has been really exciting. Secondary schools, we heard from Helen earlier how for the first time for a long time we have a weekly presence in, um, in the grammar school now, which is fantastic. And the fourth priority we set last year was changes to our building, which um, you can see as you walk in through the door that some of those are starting to happen. We also talked last year about some relational goals, if you like. You might remember this picture. Do you remember, I talked about 8, 9 and 10, Jesus Close, as if uh, representing the three services, the 8 o'clock, the 9.15, the 10.59, as an example of um, three communities, three families that lived right next door to each other. And um, I challenged us that it's up to neighbours, whether they're the neighbours from hell or the neighbours from heaven, and that as a church of very different traditions and personalities and styles, uh, we were encouraging one another to work closely together, to be good neighbours, to be popping in and out of each other's homes, to be um, thoughtful and considerate, and to make this a place, a terrace, if you like, that people want to move into. And I think there are many examples um, of that happening over the last year, and I want to say thank you for that. So we can look back in the, um, over the last year and think, well, lots of great things have happened. There has been lots of signs of, of growth. We've heard some of them in this service. And, um, and so it's possible to look back and think, wow, you know, many things are, are growing, and it, it's wonderful. And we're grateful to God for that. And, um, and as we look at the trajectory, we can see things, um, maybe many things that are, are not what they, they were. And, um, and we, we can feel grateful to God. We can also um, 
be happy to be part of this church. And we can sometimes feel, well, it, it says something good about us if we're part of something that is, um, that is good, that is growing. And if we're not careful, we can um, become exactly like the world around us, which insists that everything has to keep growing, nothing's allowed to go wrong, um, nothing goes bad, it's all good. But that is not the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is to invite people whose lives don't all go up and to the right, but where sometimes really painful things happen. To invite us on a journey that isn't all just going better and better and better, but where there are ups and downs, where there are pains and brokenness. And I believe it's for that reason that as these Greeks came to Jesus in the crowd, in the big feast, and Jesus, remember, was the big celebrity of his time, thousands of people would come even out into the desert where there's no food or water, they'd come to follow him. And these people come to Jesus and they want to see him. And then Jesus says these extraordinary words, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is explaining that God's way is very, very different to the world's way. And in God's way, the way to fruitfulness is not that everything keeps growing and is getting bigger and better. It's actually the way of sacrifice and of death. And this is the message of the cross. Of the cross. And it's also the life that we lead, isn't it? I mean, this has been a very difficult few months for our church. The deaths of people that we love, that we've known for many years. Suicide. Marriages and families under great pressure. Struggles. Mental health difficulties. Life being hard. And I think it's very important for us to cling on to that as a church and not shy away from it and not try and sweep it under the carpet and not try and pretend that it's one upwards graph. Because that is not the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is to embrace suffering so that God may be glorified. And Jesus goes on in our passage to speak about that, kind of foreshadowing the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Now, one of the things Jesus is doing here is teaching his disciples and teaching us to pray. He comes up with two prayers. Which are you going to pray? Father, save me from this terrible trial. Now, I don't know about you, that's the prayer that I go to. Stop all this happening. I'm hurting. This is breaking me. This is wrong. Stop it, God. That's the prayer that Jesus rejects. No. It's for this reason that I have come to this hour. His prayer is, Father, glorify your name. And I want to encourage us to pray that as a church. That as we look to the future, by God's grace, we, we hope, we're planning that people will continue to join the church and come to faith and find the kind of transformation that Phil and Izzy were talking about. We're praying and expecting that new things will continue to bubble up. But bigger than that, I would love our prayer to be, Father, glorify your name. Because that is our ultimate purpose to glorify God, not to build any kind of empire. And Jesus goes on to say, I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And this is the wonderful, it's the paradox, isn't it? It's the mystery of the kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about his death on the cross. In other words, disaster in the eyes of his followers. But it's that that draws all people to Jesus. And I believe that as we embrace all that God is giving us, the good bits and the struggles and the difficult bits, and in all of it, try and lift Jesus up, that is the thing that will cause 
this church to continue to be healthy and to grow and to grow in depth and in new people and in new and surprising ways. And so the main thing I want to focus us on is not our strategies. It's not the things that we are planning to build, good though I be- and spirit-led though I believe those are, but to have absolutely central the lifting up of Jesus, the drawing attention to Jesus, the encouraging people who walk through those doors or walk into our homes or walk into our lives, for us to have the courage to point to him and not to say, come and join this amazing church that I'm part of, or at least if we might say that, to say, and there you will meet an even more extraordinary person. As we look to the year ahead, we are planning new things and we hope that they will draw more people in and we hope that they will be exciting and good and I believe they will. I want to share some of them with you very briefly. The first is to continue to build a Christ-like community. We are ordinary people, as we say, loved by an extraordinary God and we're trying to reflect that by reaching further out into the community You may have heard me say before, I've calculated we could run 43 morning services before we'd run out of people in Marlow um, to come to church. We've got a long way to go in reaching people who don't know the life that God can give them. We also have Gabrielle, who is um, sitting at the back there, has been working really hard in training up a pastoral care team, and we will shortly be sort of uh, announcing that to offer more support, more care, um, more love to uh, the members of this fellowship. We're going to continue with the small groups um, as we've heard about already. The second thing we're going to do, uh, with no apology, because wise communities always do this, is to over-invest in young people, whether you're a nation or a council or a school or a business or a church. It is wise to over-invest in young people. And so we're going to continue to invest and in um, Teeny Saints that we've heard about in our primary schools, um, Sandgate and Holy Trinity, and in the work we're doing in the secondary schools, and we hope we're going to continue to develop the work that's happening among um, young adults in their 20s and 30s um, through the, the small group that we run and the 7 o'clock service um, that we've heard about already. We're also planning to um, invest in training new leaders. We're already doing this through um, our interns, And uh, Roland, our curate, was himself an intern a few years ago. We see this as part of filling the pipeline for leadership, not just for this church, but perhaps for this whole region, to help train up and be a place where people can come and be trained to be future leaders in the church and perhaps outside the church as well. So from September, we are going to, um, we are planning to be a centre where people from churches in this area can can send their interns to be trained. At the moment, our interns go off to Ealing every Tuesday in London. Um, There's nowhere between West London and Cheltenham for people to be trained like this at the moment. And we are planning to start a centre which Jill and Roland are going to be leading here in Marlow. We also have plans, and we may say more about this as the year goes on, for other leadership training, trying to train tomorrow's future leaders of the church so that we can go on growing communities, not just this one, but other communities um, in the area. And finally, um, and Tobias mentioned this earlier with his question, we're going to be, we are looking very carefully at our buildings and how they can serve the vision. Um, these, the vision that we believe God is giving us as a church is way bigger than any building. The important thing is that our buildings serve that vision, and we are looking very closely at what that might mean for us. There'll be more news on that as well as the year progresses. So we have lots of plans and and I I believe in them. I think they are good. I hope that some of these excite you. There might be some things there that you think, oh, I'd like to find out more about that. I'd like to get involved. I'm motivated to try and make those things happen. Maybe um, as well, some of the many other visions in the church are ones that you want to get involved in. We've got, um, Sarah's just been to Calais for two days to help with refugees. We're sending a team to Romania. We're sending a team to Tanzania this year. There are all kinds of ways to get involved in the bigger picture as well as closer to home. But the final um, plea I want to give us as we think about the year ahead is to go back to the picture of lifting Jesus up. 
Because as Jesus is lifted up, just like the children flooding into the back of the church now, we pray that people will come to know him. And that all starts with us not losing our own connection with Jesus, which is about prayer. We've heard about how this area um, here is one that we set aside for prayer in the church. If you haven't been in there, do go in. There's a wonderful installation there, which is, um, can fill your imagination with new ways to pray. And I want to challenge you, however you pray now, however much or little you might think you pray, how are you going to grow in praying, in connecting with God in the year ahead? What are you going to do that's different to the last 12 months? I challenge that to myself as well. Because prayer is the thing that sparks everything in us that God is doing. And so there's a little image here um, to finish with. Our prayer is like the match that we bring to the bonfire. And whether we pray or don't pray decides whether these plans are aflame with the life of God or whether they crumble and fail as purely human attempts to do God's work. So I want to encourage us, if nothing else, to put Jesus first and daily to try and grow in the way that we connect with him. We have so many ways of praying, so many different services, so many places even in the church where we can come to pray. There are an infinite number of ways that we can come to God and present our needs and the needs of the world before him. Listen for what he might want to say to us and join in the work that he's doing in this place. I've been here six years now. I plan to be here, God willing, for a long time still to come. I really think we are just beginning the journey that God is calling us on. If we will keep Jesus at the center and keep growing, and wanting people to see him and not us. The sky's the limit. It really is. And we are all invited to be part of it. We're going to finish with um, a, a prayer or a couple of prayers. And I'd like to start by inviting all of the people who've been elected um, today who are present to stand. Don't worry, everyone's going to be standing in a minute, so you won't feel too uh, embarrassed. So church wardens, church council members, if you, could, um, if you could stand. David, I wonder if as a secretary I can invite you to stand as well. And I would love you just to stretch out a hand towards these people as a sign of um, praying for them. And I'm going to lead us um, in a prayer. Father, we thank you for these brothers and sisters who are responding to a call, a sense that they can be involved in the leadership of this church. Without you, it will be impossible for them. With you, it will be the greatest adventure of their lives. We pray that you would pour out your spirit and anoint these, your servants. Draw them closer to you in this coming year. Fill them with wisdom, with courage, with imagination, with humility, and enable them to serve us in a way that lifts Jesus high. Amen. Well, now I'd like to invite you all to stand. You don't have to do this, um, but I'm going to invite us all to recommit ourselves, myself included, to the work of God um, in thanks for what we've seen God do in the last year. And... um, in anticipation of the ways in which God might lead us. So let's take a moment of quiet. Perhaps in your own heart, you might want to respond to God. Perhaps you might want to pray about something that has really caught your imagination. Perhaps you want to lift up a concern or a fear or a worry. Perhaps you just want to say, here I am, God, send me. Father, we are here for you. What makes us different from any other gathering 
any club, any society, is that you, the living God, gather us together and dwell in our midst. So come, pour out your Holy Spirit on us afresh today. We offer our lives to you. We yield our wills, our preferences, our, our longings. We yield them to you. And we offer ourselves, ordinary people, to you, our extraordinary God. We pray that you would fill us with gratitude for all you have done and all you've given to us. Thank you for your faithfulness through good times and bad. And in this moment now, as we look to the future, we say yes to all your plans for us. And we pray that you would bind us tightly together to be united in your will for this church and this town and this nation and this world. We pray that you would take the little we bring and multiply it greatly. And we pray most of all that the name of Jesus would be lifted high in our lives and in this church and that many, many would be drawn to him. Amen. It feels like quite a solemn moment. It is a solemn moment. But it's such an exciting moment to me. As I look around this room, I think, wow, what could God do through us in the next 12 months? I can't wait to find out. And to be back here next year, I wonder what will be on the screen behind me. But now we're going to finish um, with a final hymn. Um, so please remain standing for it. It's a prayer asking God to guide us, to lead us by his Holy Spirit. As you know, our first priority in this church is to, to be spirit-led in our decisions. Not what we want, but what God wants for us. And so um, let's sing this hymn together as a prayer as we finish our time together. Finish um, our time together. I want to say thank you so much um, for being here, for participating, for all you do in the life of our church. I'd like to challenge you to pray, maybe even before you leave the building. Go to the prayer chapel, go to um, the side and light a candle here in the North Isle. Or maybe if you are a leader and you would like to be prayed for, come to the front. I'm aware there are people I haven't even mentioned. Pat is leading Lighthouse Central. Sarah, who's taking over um, Lighthouse um, in Marlow. Vanessa, who's leading our refugee project. Maybe you're leading in business, uh, maybe in education, in healthcare, maybe just in your friendship group. We have a prayer team who would love to pray for you and what God's calling you to do. We also have... Um, a list of things that, that uh, we'd love to pray for. If you have a knee problem, um, if you're feeling hemmed in or imprisoned, if you've got a problem with your chest or your shoulder, um, if you've got a cough, if somebody feels old but wishes they felt younger again. These are all things that our prayer team, just uh, form a cue for that one. Um, our prayer team pray before every service and those are things they feel God would love um, t us to pray for you about. Or maybe you would just like someone to listen to something that's happened in your life this week. We love to pray. God is not running out of power or goodness. And he is just waiting for us to ask him. So why not pray before you leave um, this building? There's one thing, I'm afraid, bad vicar, that I forgot earlier in the service, which, so, which is the bands of marriage, which are very important. So I'm just going to publish two bands of marriage. I hope you don't remain, mind uh, remaining standing just for a few more moments. So I published the Bands of Marriage between Craig Francis Engel and Sophie Georgina May Withams of the parish of Guildford for the third time of asking, and between Pardeep Salhotra and Rajni Gill, both from Hayes, for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason why they may not marry, you must declare it now. Wonderful. Well, that's very good news for them. We look forward to celebrating their weddings here soon. But now let's remain standing as we ask God for his blessing with a final prayer. Father, we thank you for this time together, for the privilege of being your children and of being part of this church family. 
May we be those who pray, Father, glorify your name. May we be those who lift the name of Jesus high so that many are drawn to him. May we be people of prayer who depend on you for everything in our lives and who trust you through good times and bad. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit fill us now and remain with us always. Amen. A final thank you to all those who've made this service happen, to David, who's our our, um, secretary taking all the notes, Paul, who's done a huge amount of work um, putting all the slides together, and and all the team without whom this couldn't have happened. Thank you to you. Uh, Ridian is going to play us out on the organ now, but tea and coffee are being served, drinks at the back. Please do stay and chat or come forward to pray.